My interest in travelling to the Carpathians in Romania began in about 2001 when I was travelling back in the car from um, running a workshop and there was a programme on Radio 4 called Wild Europe and it's about different landscapes in Europe and how, and in this case it's about the shepherds in the Carpathians and how they were affected by the large carnivores. And um, at the same time, I, the last few years I've been working with the hill farmers on the North York Moors, which is where I live, and I've spent a lot of time with them looking at their way of life and how they bring up animals in this country. And I was really interested in the comparisons and the differences. And um, it just all sounded really fascinating and I just wanted to go. Hey, My first trip to Romania was in June 2003 and it was a half holiday, half recce with my husband just to see what Romania was like because I'd never been there before and um, see if it was safe to go on my own to take photographs. We flew to Bucharest and took the overnight train which took 12 hours and um, when we woke up in the morning there was this most fantastic landscape and it was really beautiful, sunlight was coming up and there were already there were people working on the land, they were scything I think at that time and I just knew that was it, that was it. I really wanted to do a long term project there and I hadn't even stepped foot off the train yet. This particular project was made um, in response to the Romanian people that I was working with and there's not a lot of cars in some parts of the rural Romania still and so people are walking everywhere so I took that approach as well and I walked from village to village and I'd follow the cart tracks up through the hills and the dirt roads from one village to the next or there's little footpaths that wind up through the orchards and all the time I was just meeting local people and what they were doing you know, picking apples or scything or whatever they were doing and I just stopped to talk to them um, as best I could because I was working on my own then and um, just photographed what was going on, what they were holding, what they were doing um, and that's basically how the project took shape. women in Romania they're tied up with looking after the kids, um, doing the work on the farm in the house and everything and they don't have the opportunity to travel so therefore they just found it really interesting that I was in that situation that I could do that. Um, because I'd been there a few times by this point um, people were inviting me into their homes and obviously I was looking at things and I'm noticing completely different things than you'd see out in the fields and I really felt sort of embarrassed that I couldn't speak the language and I really wanted to be able to communicate and I wanted to find out more information so at that point I thought I need a translator and although I'd used one on occasions I decided that I wanted one with me all the time that then they could explain what I was doing and you know, they could ask questions about me, which is what they wanted to do as well. The pictures of the pickle jars came about um, because I'd been invited into people's homes after a while. I'd been in the villages quite a few times and one visit I went to, they showed me into their cellar and where they stored all the things that they made that they kept for the winter. And, and they were really beautiful, big jars of all the things that they'd grown, all the things they collected over the summer and basically had to last them sort of through the winter. And I like the idea that these were produced by the women of the house and it's sort of like invisible work that people don't see as they're walking around. And I really wanted to, um, for that to be shown, I guess. And so I decided to take them out of the cellar and photograph them individually and make them into sort of something really special. Because for them, it's just an everyday thing. They do it every year. and. Um, so I photographed it onto some white paper that I'd taken with me and just kept them all so that the large ones appeared as large as they were and the small ones were as small as they were in comparison to each other.
The sheep spend the winter with the villagers and then in the spring they go back up as a massive group up into the mountains with the shepherds and they don't come down until September. But just as they go up, the shepherds organise a measurement of the milk festival where they gather all the sheep together and then each person individually milks their own sheep. They weigh it and that determines how much cheese they're going to get each year. And um, at the end of the festival they, they make the cheese from all the milk and then portion it out and just give a bit to each villager. Of course all the traditions that are photographed in Hand to Mouth are under threat because Romania joined the EU earlier this year and um, particularly anything involving the hands such as hand milking sheep and cows, making cheese which involves the shepherds you know really churning the milk with their hands and anything about um, animals being slaughtered which will then be sold for other people to eat. None of that so far has been allowed within countries that have joined the EU so um, I guess there won't be much choice for younger people in the villages you know whether they want to do that or not they won't have the option. I think um, there are people in the UK that would think this is a very desirable way of life but for the Romanian people they've got no choice the shepherds and the villagers they all brought up with this way of life and they have to continue it because they haven't got any other options the younger generation are coming up and now they're wanting the choice now that the sort of communist regime has, has stopped them it stopped them traveling for many years and a lot of the villages i went to there weren't that generation just weren't really there they were all traveling off around europe getting jobs getting money bringing it back, building big houses, getting rid of the traditional wooden houses. And um, I guess, for me, I, th I think that that was a shame, but we've got all that, so why shouldn't they? And I think they should have the option.